Welcome back to Big Void. Uh, let's see. So, interesting times. Uh, I'm. Why am I back at Death Ride? You may ask because I, you know, I had a somewhat uh, disappointing experience with it with Salerno, and uh, I had received this as a, I think, as a gift from somebody in one of those Secret Santas or something like that, or an exchange or something like that. So. I thought, well, you know, I'll uh, try and give it a go because it's only a little four small maps, right? That's the size of a map there. Well, basically this size here. And there's four of these. This is a situation map. And these are really cool, right? Uh, different time scale, different ground scale in this particular game, which is in of itself interesting. Uh, so it's 15 minute turns. And I thought, well, you know what? I, I should refresh myself on the rules and let's <clears throat> let's have a look in detail at the order of battle because that's where I got messed up last time with how things uh, are set up and what's supposed to happen and all the rest of it. And uh, unfortunately, that's kind of where we uh, things kind of started to fall off the rails right away. So, but before I get to that, Let's talk a little bit about what comes in the box. and what, let, Let's treat this as kind of a shrink grip. So if you're interested, you can have a look at it. You might want to go buy this game. Uh, four fairly decent maps. I, you know, I'm not a huge fan of the artwork on these maps. And uh, in the past, there have been issues with alignment. I've set these maps up previously to look at it and they all set up just fine. I seem to be accurate and aligned, which is nice. I really like the idea of these maps for situations and setups. This is scenario starting at 1330. I think this is 1430. Yeah, 1430 start. And so it shows you where stuff is supposed to go. And all these little colored uh, symbols here are kind of sort of represented on the counters. And uh, they're to represent the units. Uh, sorry, the, the, the units within given battalions or formations of the forces that, that are fighting. And uh, so I, I started reading the rules, <clears throat> and the first thing that I, it struck me was some, some poor, it just, it basically assumes a lot. It assumes you know what the hell's going on with the system completely. You, you really need to know what a GS counter is, what a DS counter is. There's no definitions anywhere. And then uh, the air, the air definitions of who gets what and when was, uh, my, was my first, oh, hang on. So this is, this is the, uh, the, the rule book that comes with the game. No rules, serious rules come with the game. That's to keep the cost down. I get it. Maybe you can download it or something. I, I don't know where the rules are online. Uh, I think someone, uh, I think maybe even Chris Fasulo sent me the 2.5 rules a long time ago uh, for Kursk. And it doesn't have a lot of the command bits and pieces or logistics and stuff like that. But that has the majority of the rules in. Well, right off the bat, you know, it says the, the Germans can get up to three emissions. Okay, well, three emissions per what? Then it says every game turn, the German player rolls to see how many of these three emissions are available. Okay, roll a d10, and during each hour, refer to the result. During each hour. Well, hang on a second, we're doing 15 minute turns, right? So do I get, get them, do I get three air missions per turn? Three air missions per hour? So poorly worded, just first first comment out of the gate first thing you see you're like what the fuck and then you go okay well uh let's read the example maybe that explains it example during all the 1400 hour game turns so all the 1400 hour game turns uh the player rolls a d10 each game turn and gets at least one result of eight these results provide this result provides the German player one air mission availability. I guess there's a chart here somewhere. We'll have a look at a sec. The player may choose any of the air mission counters, any of the air mission counter he wants when they're available. Okay. Uh, and there's no punctuation. There's punctuation here, but none here. I, I don't know. 
Um, all right. Uh, so is there, let's, let's, you know, while we're here, let's see if in case there's something very obvious on the chart and I'm being a jerk. Cause look, I don't set out, I don't set out to have a problem with these games. I set out to play them and enjoy them. And I just seem to find challenges sometimes. Uh, air mission availability. Okay. All right. So now here, if I, I guess if I had pulled out the chart and looked at it at the same time, I can see that, uh, oh no, it's twice. So twice per game turn. I don't understand. And then three times per game turn here? Turns 1300. Is it uh, per day? Where's the turn chart? The 1400 hour. So it's. 21st of May and 22nd of May. No, this is all 21st of May. What? This should say 19. Where's the 22nd of May? I'm Now I'm uh, even more confused uh, about where... Day, 1330, 1345. Okay, so so why have the freaking year? Uh, that's the hours, 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 20. So right here, it should switch to the 22nd, right? It should be the 22nd. This is only one day a game. Why do I have two... 1300 hour, two of these, three of these, three of these. So this is the split. This is just the split. That's what it is. Okay. I'm just read the freaking chart, Kevin. So one to three, four to seven, eight to 10. I would get two if I rolled eight to 10 at the 1500 hour. But uh, here it was one through seven, eight through 10. Okay. All right. I thought it, uh, all right. So the once per hour, the Germans can get up three missions per hour. Every game turn on the top of the hour, the German player rolls to see how many of those three missions are available. During all the 1400 hour game turns, there's only one 1400 hour game turn though. Anyway, like I said, and that's not the, that's not the biggest problem. Here's the biggest problem is uh, we have this concept of uh, British uh, right column and left column. And in the historical notes, it discusses a east and west column. And then in the, those historical notes, it has a little note uh, as, a, as a postscript of what actually happened. If you go through and read the whole thing, it says, oh, by the way, kind of screwed up on some of the counters. And there's something wrong with the uh, AT regiment. But in addition, we inadvertently switched the assignments of 4th RTR and 7th RTR from the west column to the east column. Well, I guess that means, you know, like left or right or whatever. And then the 9 DLI is marked as the 7th DLI. You know, given that this game is printed on demand at uh, Chris's house, I wouldn't, I, I'm, I'm unclear why those that had purchased the game weren't issued new ones, but I got this for free, so I'm not going to complain. So let's see now. Let, where are the counters? Here we go. Uh, so, 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 here are the allied counters, and I'm going to, I'll try and zoom this in a little bit for you in a second. Just get this all set up. So, and then there's an order of battle thing, an order of battle. Here. So when I read this, so it's left column and right column, all right, so the left column, is this a sort of beige, uh, orangey color. So the left column, well, it's labeled the right column here. And uh, they're gonna have uh, all of the, I guess, uh, so they're gonna have the fourth RTR, which is these guys. But really that's this, these guys because they mixed, they mixed it up. They mixed these two up. They switched them inadvertently. Okay, so I should have 20. 
And see, here's the thing. So look, it says HQ and then times 20. Now, when I, my instinct when I read this, and this is the issue I have with Solono, it's like, oh, it's 20, 20 units that look like that. Well, that's the HQ and then all the units in the HQ. So 20, so there's eight across. That's 16, 16 units there. 16 units there. Where's the must be another counter sheet? Nope. 16. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. There's eighteen here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh. Okay. That's right, nine across, nine eight across. Uh so eighteen here. And I'm wondering where where the other what the other two units are that are in that formation. So I, I don't know. Okay, let, let's check. Uh so this is the infantry unit that's gonna be this sixth DLI and uh that's has nine units brackets 14 14 without trucks um okay I, um, so there's nine units across here and the, as you can see how it's got this symbology right so it's motorized infantry and then but really what it means is there's the motorized hq and then the engineers the, the at guns the mortars I guess the little scout doohickey uh, platoon and then a, a four companies, companies A through D. That's nine units. There's not 14 truck counters. Uh, see down here, there's one, two, three, four. I'm not sure how that works and I don't know how to allocate that or how that is rationalized because the five would probably be one, two, three, four, five for that guy. I don't know. So I don't know. So there's nine units. So there are nine units. So that's, that's correct. So, um, I don't know where all the, I don't know where the 20 units comes from. And I would love to know, cause I'm, I'm really I'm sort of keen to set this up despite the fact that left is right and right is left here, uh, with color coding and that this doesn't seem to match this necessarily. Maybe, maybe the nine adds in or includes these, uh, sorry, the 20 includes these guys as well, which are situated on another counter sheet here. So that would be 18, 19, 20, well, that'd be 21 then, 22, 23, 24. So that wouldn't be right. Um, so you can see, it's a little, Confusing, and I, and I had this same issue in the last module with Solano in that if you weren't an expert or at least a, a had been trained in some sort of military doctrine, it would be easy to get kind of uh, bamboozled here by what's supposed to go where and you know what this counter actually represents. Uh, is it? Uh, one unit, multiple units. Now it does have some nice explanations here, uh, but it it's very confusing. And uh, and so my final quip, my final thing. Let's do the the wrap up on the on the counters. So you know these are pretty densely packed informational counters. These triangles and, and squares and things I think are unique to this module. The others don't have that. Uh, they they tend to stick with these bars that go across the you know for formation identification. They're busy counters. There's no question about that. I, I find them to be okay at best. At least the stock is thick, right? Uh, but the print quality for the cost, and I know it's a small shop, one man band, print on demand type of thing from his house. It's just expensive and uh, for what you get. Uh, a lot of charts. There's a lot of charts floating around. You need quite a bit of room to set this guy up, even even a small game like this. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm gonna go online and ask some questions about this and we'll see if I can't work it out. And if I can work it out securely, uh, significantly enough, then I'll come back and reread uh, the rules and we'll, uh, we'll get re-familiarized with uh, everything I need to, Reconfirm what GS and DS stand for. I think there's a little cheat sheet here. Yeah, uh, but I don't have. There's some things in here that it was suggesting you should use uh, in op optional rules. Yeah, some and 
other errata here as well. Uh, it says you should use the artillery mission markers and you should use command and control. I don't believe I get that in the base game necessarily. Intelligence. Maybe I do. I'm looking here to see if they're in the command and control phase page 31. So maybe there is. Maybe we will be okay with all that. Anyway, lots of good stuff to have a look at. I'd like to get this sort of squared away. Is a really nice uh, write up on the. Let's zoom out a little bit. A nice write up on the uh, on the actual battle and what happened. Uh, talking about these columns and things, and so you can see here. Here are the. Here are the columns. So we can assume that the uh, the sixth Durham East is the left column and the eighth. Durham Light was in the west, was in the, the right column or the west column. Uh, and the 7th Tank Regiment, so all that's accurate, it's just not represented, represented correctly on the cameras, I guess. So, nice rundown on what happened and, and sources in the back, which is nice. But like I said, it, it jumps straight in and uh, assumes that uh, now this here, this is this this is just a catalog of un of units. That's all this is, uh, telling you what's in the game. This should, that could have been at the front. Right? This is all you get in the book. Here's how many counters you get, uh, and that's it, right? Uh, that could have been all done at the front. No re no need to. Uh, Point, uh, point all this out, 2.1, 2.2, uh, come on. Give me some more information about, about the game. All right, I don't know. There you have it. We'll see what happens from here. Ciao.